We are now going to discuss a sampling distribution, which means we're taking the distribution of sample mean. Statistics such as x-bar are random variables since their value varies from sample to sample. As such, they have probability distributions associated with them. What we are going to do is we're going to focus on the shape, center, and spread of statistics such as x-bar. The sampling distribution of a statistic is a probability distribution for all possible values of the statistic computed from a sample of size n. The sampling distribution of the sample mean x-bar is the probability distribution of all possible values of the random variable x-bar, which we compute from a sample of size n from a population with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma. In other words, we are taking samples from the population of size n, that's the sample size, and we're going to compute the averages or the means from these samples. Now, why is the reason for doing this? We know that we can determine the area under the curve once we have an approximately normal distribution. We go to the Z table, and that will be able to tell us what proportion or what's the probability of a particular characteristic. However, what if the distribution is not originally normal? We cannot use the Z table. As such, we have to find a way to be able to use the normal distribution. So what we want to do is we want to describe the distribution of the sample means or the sample x bars from a population that is not normal and see what we can find from this particular distribution, how we can use it. So the problem we're going to deal with is we're going to roll a fair die and we create a relative frequency table. The faces on the die are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Each one has an equal chance of coming out of appearing when we roll the fair die. Therefore, that's one sixth or 1,667 thousandths is the relative frequency. Well, we calculate the population mean of 3 and 5 tenths. The standard deviation is 1 and 708 thousandths. And when we look at the distribution, we have a uniform distribution that the number of times it lands on a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 is approximately the same. Using this information, we cannot go and use the z-table. We cannot determine anything about this particular occurrence. So how are we going to resolve this issue? Well, we're going to estimate the sampling distribution of x bar by obtaining 200 simple random samples. We're going to do this three different times. The first time, we're going to take 200 samples, each one of size 4. Then we're going to take 200 ramples, random samples of size 10. And finally, 200 random samples of size 30 we're going to draw the histograms of the sampling distributions of the sample mean for each sample size that we just discussed, and we want to see what the distribution looks like. Well, here we have a distribution of four rolls of the die, 200 times we, we took that particular information, and notice the distribution is no longer uniform it's starting to appear like an approximately normal distribution. Here we have that we rolled the die 10 times. We took the mean of each particular sample. Again, we did that 200 times. And again, we have a distribution that's approximately normal. And if we look right in the middle over here, you notice that it's centered around a mean of 3 and 5 tenths, which is the same as the population mean. Finally, we take a sample of 30 rolls of a die. We do that 200 times. And this distribution looks extremely normal, more approximately normal than the rest of them. And again, it's centered around 3 and 5 tenths, which is the same as the population mean. So what does this tell us? 
Let's take the key points of a sampling distribution of x bar. Suppose that a simple random sample of size n is drawn from a large population that has a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma. The sampling distribution of x bar, when we take the mean of all of the sample means, we call that the mu of x bar, is going to be approximately the same as the population mean. But the standard deviation is going to be different because the distribution is less dispersed. Since we will not be able to have all 200 sample means all the time, we have to come up with a formula, and therefore we have the standard deviation of the means of all groups of size n is going to be called sigma x bar. We take the population standard deviation sigma, and we divide that by the square root of the sample size, the square root of n. Thus, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar is called the standard error of the mean, and we denote that by sigma x bar. So what does this tell us? The central limit theorem gives us the shape of the distribution of the sample mean, and it becomes approximately normal as the sample size n increases, regardless of the shape of the original population. Well, this is important information because now we're able to solve problems that find the percentage, the probability, or the proportion of groups of size n, but we're going to focus on the sample mean. So let's take an example where we can actually do that. Suppose that the prices of women's athletic shoes have a mean price of $75.15 and a standard deviation of $17.89. We want to determine the probability that the mean price of a random sample of 50 pairs of women's athletic shoes will be between $70.15 and $80.15. Notice two things. First of all, we are not given the information that the price of women's athletic shoes is approximately normal. And secondly, we're asked to find the probability of the mean price of a sample of size 50, 50 being our n. And that also tells us we're use a lot, utilizing the central limit theorem. All right, so we put that in probability notation. And again, just like we did when we found the area under the normal curve, we draw the normal curve and we shade the area corresponding to the proportion of the probability. So we take a look at our curve. It's centered around the population mean, which is the mu of the x bar also of $75.15. And we want to find the area under the curve between the two given values. Well, that means the second step is we have to calculate the relative standing or the z-scores corresponding to the shaded area. But first, we must calculate the standard deviation for all groups of size 50. Using the formula, we have the sigma x bar is the population mean, which is in this case $17.89. We divide that by the square root of the sample size, which is 50, and we get approximately $2.53. Once we have that, we calculate the relative standing or the z value for $70.15 and $80.15. And we get the relative standing for the $70.15 as 1 and 98 hundredths of a standard deviation below the mean. And for the $80.15, it's 1 and 98 hundredths of a standard deviation above the mean. Well, now using the standard normal table, we want to look up the area under the curve. Now, remember, it's between those two values. And the table gives us from the left tail up to the z value. So the area between is the left tail of the upper value. In other words, the area from the left tail to 1 and 98 hundredths of a standard deviation above the mean, which according to our table is 0.9761, or almost 98% of the area, minus the area from the left tail to the lower relative standing, up to negative 1 and 98 hundredths of a standard deviation. And looking on the table, we get 0 0.0239, which is a little bit more than 2% of the area under the curve. 
subtracting the smaller region from the larger one, we get that the area is 0.9523, or approximately 95% of all groups of size 50 will have an average or a mean of anywhere between $70.15 and $80.15.